I think that this is this is a trial looking at VGF uh, targeting combined with uh, chemotherapy uh, as second-line therapy of urotelial cancer, metastatic urotelial cancer that progressed to the first-line therapy, which is cisplatin-based, gemcitin cisplatin-based. Right now, we have many immunotherapy options in that setting uh, approved, many PV-1, PVL-1 inhibitors approved, and with substantial benefit. Uh, and this is a chemotherapy option uh, that um, for the first time has shown that combining uh, anti-angiogenic therapy, you can increase the response rates and the progression-free survival. So you can double the response rate and you can marginally but uh, statistically significantly increase the progression-free survival by one, two months. So this is more or less the across all diseases and in the second line setting what you can get from combining anti-angiogenic therapies with chemotherapy. So that's the gain. I don't think that the relatively small gain in PFS is different from what we saw for decades with anti-angiogenic therapies in many indications. So that's, that's what you can get. Uh, we don't have biomarkers still to select what is the best option and how this compares with immunotherapy, which is definitely an option. But in some uh, patients that might not be eligible, for example, to immunotherapies, this can be uh, an, an, a neither response because they have risk uh, uh, because of visceral disease, liver metastasis and other uh, or painful metastases, uh, having a response uh, with the addition of anti-VGF anti uh, therapy is uh, probably uh, very clinically meaningful to the patient. So it's, it will be more a patient, not biomarker selection, but it's individualization of therapy, and, and in some indication it will be uh, a major achievement. Well, it is not in the overall population, again, but when I have the, friend, the patient in front of me, uh, this means a lot. If I get a response and I can benefit the patient, is having pain, uh, has a risk of uh, really uh, dying because of the location of the metastasis uh, in short term. So if I get a response, uh, this is helpful for that patient. And in, I mean, in this indication as a clinician, I think it's beneficial. But looking across all population, I don't think that one or two months gain in PFS, progression-free survival, is uh, uh, enough. I don't think it will translate uh, uh, b basically because the patients will eventually be offered immunotherapies and many additional. Right now, the paradigm for treatment of metastatic urotelial cancer is changing. In the past, uh, like three, four years ago, we had just one treatment option, and now the patients can get second, third line. So I think that the post progression survival will be uh, big enough to dilute the potential effect that the first line, or sorry, the ramucirumab in the second line might have. So I think it's not going to really change survival. And that's what you see with anti agents overall. It's very hard to see an overall survival gain when you have other treatment options later. So I think that this is probably the most beautiful um, uh, abstract uh, to be presented today uh, at the presidential session. This is, in my opinion, and many other clinicians involved with uh, renal cell cancer, really a, really a paradigm shift. They, they move directly from the phase one data with Nivo Ipilimumab, uh, showing very high response rates and the long durability of the response uh, to the First line setting, com uh, comparing this to the standard of care sunitinib and a uh, multi tyrosine kinase inhibitor working like anti angiogenic therapy. Okay? And it is uh, a substantial increase in, in, in response rate, um, in complete response that you get with a combination of immunotherapies. Uh, and also, uh, um, we haven't seen the number exactly in terms of overall survival, but the curves separate and appear to be very uh, significant across starting very early on. Uh, and uh, I think that this is something uh, that 
uh, probably change the practice because as early as possible if you give a, a very effective therapy that has chances of uh, maybe not curing the disease but having a very very big and nice response that is durable this may have an impact and we are seeing impact in overall survival later on okay so i think that this is really a game changer and uh, these patients eventually if they progress or don't have a good response uh, they will get uh, sunitinib or alternative agents and then they get even third line agents uh, but the uh, um, the really the the main uh, effect is really being able to select the ones that have the highest benefit upfront of response and probably we will listen more details around pdl1 expression how this can help to select the ones that are more likely to even have a greater benefit of this therapy uh, at the beginning um, this is for me one of the most beautiful examples that you have to as early as possible give effective therapies uh, to the patient. I think that uh, they could be translated because we have uh, clinical trial, phase 3 trials comparing sunitinib and pazopanib and showing exactly the same uh, similar survival and benefit with the therapies. I've, I think that we will never have a randomized trial comparing NIVO, EP or other immuno-oncology combinations with pazopanib uh, to confirm. Uh, so I think that you can extrapolate and reserve uh, uh, other options for a later stage.